Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to have a look at part two of the bookshop database. So what I've done is, just to recap, there is a table of the books, so that's like your stock. I've created a table of customers and a sales table. So I'll just close the both of them down. And then a query it's going to record the sales so that's what I want to do in this little video so basically I'll just show you how the end product works so if I select a person it will automatically fills in the details and he bought the cycle and he bought one copy of that and there's a calculation field at the end there to work up work out how much you made so let's just close this sales query down and Let's get rid of all these tables. Now, I need to go into database tools and break these relationships. So I'll just do the reverse process. And then just delete each of these tables, save that, close this window down, and then just get rid of each of these tables. So first of all, we're creating a new table, which is going to be customers. So it's a straightforward table design. So customer, customer ID, and that is going to be a number field. In fact, it's going to be an auto number field. And then we're going to have customer name. You can actually, um, put the word name but it doesn't really like it so then address city postcode tell and email so this is a straightforward table so this primary key is going to be customer ID so that's unique identifier everything else looks okay there so I'm just going to save that as TBL customers and okay that one let's just put a customer in there so customer name mr s saxton you can do first name and surname if you wish one red road leads le12 rt telephone number 0131 email steve at it's easy uk so that's your first customer close that one down now we need to do a new table for sales table design so this is going to be the table for sales so we're going to have sales id that's also going to be an auto number and then we're going to have customer and i want to do a lookup on customer so instead of short text, I'm just going to do the lookup wizard. And it also be customers. And I want customer name. I'm not bothered about that. So it's going to come in like that. And I can see I've done the typo straight away. And it's going to be called customer. That's okay. Finish. Save that. TBL sales okay primary key is going to be the sales ID now the next one that I want in there is book ID and the same thing is going to happen so the book ID is short text because that's what I left it on in this table and I want to do a lookup on that one as well so lookup wizard next so this is going to books yep and title I want to know what the books is, what book is yeah that's a list of the books book close this book finish yes save it and 
last one is quantity and that just wants to be a number field so n for number and i can save that one have a quick look there we go let's close that one down now so what i need to do is the relationship for all of these so go to database tools relationships and add each of these tables on so there's a lookup links um i want customer id to customer i want to edit the relationship i want it to be that link and let's just move this around so sales is in the middle i want book to book id yeah let's just double click on that i want that to be enforced referential integrity one to many that's the key one to many so basically one customer can have many sales and one book can be sold many times so this is like a join table so i'll just save save that close this down now i'm ready to do my query my sales query so query design Add the three tables the links are already there or oh, should be already there yeah put them in the right position you don't have to reposition these but i just like to look at the fields so i know what i've got that's okay i can see all of those can't see all of those just pull that down don't need this there you could have used it from that side but that's okay so now what i need to do is i need the sales id field i need the customer from the sales table now that's the many part of this link and then if you put the customer name address city postcode tell an email in what will happen is when you select the customer it'll drop all that in for you so the same process is then going to work for the book. So come bring the book in. And quantity. Now the cost needs to come from the book table. So let's get the cost. So that's the cost of the book. Let's have a quick look at this. We haven't done a sales yet, so let's see if I can do a sale. So if I select a customer, Mr. X Saxton. So there's a duplicate look, so I need to go back into design. Okay, well it's wanting to fill the fill the book in. So let's do a book. Door. And there's a cost coming in for the door. And if I do a quantity there, two. Can see i need to put a calculation field at the end there but i need to get rid of this so i don't need this in twice so back in there yeah i didn't need customer name i don't know why i put that in there so let's run that so we've got a customer hundred of these quantity right calculation field needs to go there so into design get at the end click shift f2 to zoom that up so sales amount is going to be what i want to put in there colon now you have to refer to the tables um so probably actually before i do that i should go into the expression builder it's easier to do it so you can see rather than doing all that so sales amount still is going to be the title colon and now you need to go into your database objects so it's sales amount is going to be books cost and we need to get rid of that because i've already put a title in there and then times sales table if you don't do this it just gets confused and then you want quantity so if you just put quantity and cost there's two quantities so it gets confused so you need to tell it which table to look look at click ok to that have a look so it's 
brought in the correct price, £16. So there's your sales amount. So let's go and save this. This is going to be QRY sales. Okay. And then just close that down. Go back to your customers. Let's just correct this one and get ourselves another customer. So we're going to create a form later on where we'll be adding new customers and things like that. Um, so let's just do a new customer. Let's do Mr. Brown. He is a two red road. Leads. Oops. Two red road leads. I could do a lookup for this cities. LE2 to RT, same postcode, 0131, different phone number, and let's say it hasn't got an email. So now I've got two customers. So a sale, open the sales. When you drop this down, you've got two customers. Mr. Brown automatic fills everything in. You select the book that he wants to buy, he wants to buy the cycle. There's a price for the cycle. He wants to buy three copies of that. And as soon as you click away, the calculation works that out. So you can see that that's now £30. So, so far, let's just recap what we've done there. We've created an extra two tables. We set the relationships up in the relationship window or edited the relationships because I'd already set them up in the lookup options for these. So I went into the lookup. So that's what the wizard created. I didn't type all that, but that's what it's created. And same for the book. You've got the lookup option there. And they came through into this window, which I then double clicked on and just tick this option, which means don't let me create a sale if the book doesn't exist. And I can't have a, I can't create a sale if the customer doesn't exist either because I've got that on there. That's what that stops. It stops you having orphan records. So you really do need to have that ticked on. Whether you have these ticked on, it's up to you. Basically, um, if you deleted a customer off your database, if you had these ticked on, it would potentially delete the sales that that customer made, which you wouldn't really want. So just make sure you don't tick these as a matter of fact without thinking about it. In a later session, I'll look at join type and you can see how that works. But for now, that's all I wanted to talk about on this little session. So hopefully you've enjoyed that and pick it up on the next one when we look at creating a form to... Uh, enter this sort of sales data and check the stock. So when, obviously when you buy a book, so I've bought some books, this needs to change and it, it's not changing at the moment. So we need to look at that. We'll do an update query to reduce these numbers based on an entry in a form, which is going to be this, this query here. But that's the next session. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll see you on the, the next one. Thanks for your time.